The RV Show USA. Start living the RV dream today. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome again to my virtual campfire. Alan Warren, the RV wingman here. And today I've got a story about, uh, it's about a widow who feels like she was completely ripped off. And before I get started, uh, we're going to put my 24-hour voicemail number up on the screen right now. I hope that you will write this number down and save it. Put it in your phone directory as a favorite. This number is how you get a hold of me. I call as many people back as I possibly can. I try to help them. You know, I love being the RV wingman. I don't have all the answers, but I will be honest with you. And I'll at least give you my perspective. I don't charge anything for it. I'm not a lawyer. I don't give legal or financial advice. I'm just an old guy who tries to help people in my semi-retired life. So uh, that phone number again is on the screen. It's one three three zero wingman and you can call and leave me a message anytime, day or night. I listen to every single voicemail. As I said, I get back to as many people as possible. So recently, I heard from a lady that, well, I'm going to play the phone call first. And there were so many things that were puzzling about this. And as you're listening to it, don't just look and look at her and say, wow, sucks to be her, but try to put yourself in her shoes because we're going to be talking about that. I ended up spending a long time on the phone with this woman and she started out being very angry, very distraught and for good reason. But I hope I talked her back from the proverbial ledge. So let's go ahead and play that phone call right now. Hi, my name's Corinne. I live in Bullhead City, Arizona, and I was dealing with Sunshine RV in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Four hours after I received my RV, I realized that there was some terrible problems. Main thing is, it got so bad I had to go to the Attorney General for the state of Arizona on what happened with my RV. I purchased it for $20,000. At the end of contract, it would be $40,000. Two weeks after I got it, it was deemed salvaged and not worth more than ten to $12,000. I got relatively no help from the attorney general's office other than thank you for the information and that was about it. I would love to send my file to you if you're interested in looking at it. I just need somebody else's opinion because now I'm in a situation to where I just as soon have it repossessed at this point and take the loss. I have excellent credit. I'm now in debt and I see no way out of this. It's made me had feelings that I've never felt before. And the anger that is built up inside of me is just beyond imaginable. And if you could ever help me out, I would appreciate you just taking a look at my file. I did purchase the extended warranty, but unfortunately, after finding all the salvaged parts in my undercarriage, I realized that the warranty wasn't going to do me any good. So between my trailer and my rent space, I'm now over $800 a month on a fixed income for a senior. This voicemail went on and on and on. Uh, and it, I want to help people. I can't help everybody. Sometimes people just need someone they can visit with, somebody that they can vent to. But I called Corinne and visited with her, uh, like I said, for at least a half an hour. Uh, very nice lady. And I'm going to give you the upshot of some of the things we talked about. And the reason I'm doing this is to let you know that, that Corinne is not alone. How many of you think that you have done the right thing? You've, you've made the right decision. I often ask, what does a mistake feel like? A mistake doesn't feel like anything until you wake up like Corinne did and go, what the hell did I get myself into? I want to help people. I, I don't have all the answers, but I want to help slow you down, help you to think, think, and then be responsible for the decisions that you make. So here's sort of the upshot, and, and I'm going to play some more of Corinne here in just a second. She's a widow, and she lived in Arkansas. She found a beautiful trailer on the internet that she thought was beautiful. Nice pictures. Uh, she responded to an ad. And like many people wanting to, because the economy is so bad, they want to downsize. They have this dream of living in an RV. Well, that was Corinne. And so she contacted this company. She had no idea who they were out in Arizona. And she wanted to buy this RV. And so she bought it sight unseen. I know you may say, I would never do that. 
Well, most people wouldn't do it, but too many people do, sight unseen. Did she get an inspection? No. She said that when they did the walkthrough, she said she had no idea. This woman's never had an RV before. She doesn't know what she's buying. She's buying a dream is what she's buying that turned into a nightmare. So she had no idea what she was supposed to look for during the final walkthrough. It was a piece of junk. Uh, she didn't say it because she doesn't know for sure, but it sounds like to me it may have been a salvaged RV, maybe a repo that a dealer had per purchased from an auction, uh, slapped things back together and got it out the door. She said that the, the nightmare began immediately. She was angry. She was angry that the attorney general there in Arizona wouldn't do anything to help her. The dealer wouldn't do anything to help her. And now she is stuck. And when I spoke with her, you know, it's like a hundred and jillion degrees out there. And I said, well, <laughs> at least your air conditioner works. And she goes, no, it doesn't work either. I'm like, oh my God, how do you live out in Arizona in the desert this time of year, most of the year without air conditioning? But she stuck with that. So what are your thoughts so far? Do you see yourself as ever getting into a situation like that? I'll bet you 99% of you are going to go, no way, I, that would never happen to me. And that exact situation may not happen. It may not. But when I spoke with her, we, we talked about all different kinds of things. I want to play a little bit of the conversation that Corinne and I had. Again, I call back as many people as I possibly can. If you will call the number that's down in the description of this video, I will get your voicemail message. I will try to get back to you as quickly as possible. If I don't, please forgive me. But here's uh, more of my conversation with Corinne. And I do appreciate you getting back, and I do appreciate the work you're doing for people because it is getting out there. And and I do let people know about things like that you have on YouTube right now because it is, it's very, very informative and people are getting screwed left and right. Yes, they are. All right, well, and thank you. The have next a thing is don't let them keep jacking up the prices. Or there's not going to be any RVers out there. Well, I hear that a lot. <laughs> And it went on and on from there. But as I said, I tried to talk her back from the proverbial ledge. You know, she did not get an inspection. She didn't even think about it. She just assumed. And I'm going to do a monologue on thinking, by the way, uh, thinking and what thinking really is and what it isn't. But she assumed everything was going to be working on delivery. Boy, was she wrong. She made so many mistakes and she didn't buy a warranty. You don't have an extended warranty. You may have an extended service protection plan, but it is separate. It's not the same thing as a warranty. It's kind of similar in some ways, but it is not a warranty that you buy to extend on your RV. So I finally, I said, Corinne, I got to get. And I said, what advice would you have for people? What would you tell people now that you've owned your RV and you've had to deal with the things you've had to deal with? And I'm going to play, this is some of the advice. And just ask yourself, you know, I've done a, a recent video asking, what do you wish you would have known? Well, here's the advice that Corinne has for anybody who's going to buy an RV. And this is just some of what she had to say. What advice would you give to somebody that was kind of in your situation, you know, somebody. You make sure you go in there with one of them little lights on your head, okay? You check every electrical outlet. I mean every single one of them, okay? You check all the piping, feel underneath, make sure there's no leaks, run the water, make sure it's coming through. You got an electric, if it's not hooked up to propane, damn it, get out there and hook up a propane tank because we're checking that too. Go underneath where you have the insulation, you know, on the underneath of the belly, and you take off at least six of those screws and you look under there and make sure there's no bubbles where they put this crap on it to keep it from forever leaking. Check your tanks, make sure there's no debris in them. You can see, you, you know, you fill it up a little bit, drain it, make sure it drains properly, make sure you have new hoses, all of them. Make sure your toilet flushes without, you know, the water leaking out of the pail or the little line that goes through. Go into your shower and make sure you don't have soft ground in your shower. You know, it's really bad when half of you's in the house and the other half under the trailer. You know, check your sinks. Check under your sinks. Pull the panels off underneath your sinks and make sure it did not flood out. In this case, it did flood out. You know, it's amazing how smart we get after we get burned, right? My objective is to try to prevent you from being burned. 
I'm hopeful that this video, Corinne's experience, that you will take that and you'll go, ooh, could this happen to me? Having a, a, a nice big dose of skepticism in dealing with something like an RV is not a bad idea. Do you want to be a negative person all your life? I don't think so. But to be skeptical, reasonably skeptical, to require everything is working before you take delivery. Why did somebody buy sight unseen? Never owned an RV before. Buys an RV in a different state sight unseen and sends them money? I mean, doesn't read the paperwork until they get there? That is setting yourself up for a giant problem. Karen, if you're watching this video, God bless you. I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you, and I'm hopeful that some of the things I said were helpful. But the sad reality, folks, is that Corinne is in a situation that she probably is going to have to deal with. That's just the truth. I believe, again, I'm not a lawyer, but I believe that the state of Arizona has a limit of $3,500. If she wants to take the dealer to small claims court and she has a case, she might be able to get a little bit of money back. But my final takeaway is slow down, take your time, consider getting a third-party independent inspection unless you are willing to accept the responsibility for possibly screwing up. And many people, they say, oh, I'll accept the responsibility. And then when it comes time to, here's your, here's your dose of reality, ooh, they look for anybody else to blame. I'm sorry this video went on so long, but I thought that Corinne's story was worthy of sharing. Again, if you have a story, if you want to share your experience, good or bad, I will do my very best to try to help you. We are a community here around this virtual campfire. I'm just one of the people in this community. I count on all of you, and your input is important. So please call me if I can be of help. Drop a comment below, and let's try to keep it civil. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. And as I said um, many, many times, thanks for being a part of my virtual campfire. I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. Be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave your good manners at home.